Today in the shop, I'm building a trailer to haul the little Jeep on. I wanted to make a trailer that was just about the right size for the Jeep, but that would tilt so I could easily drive the Jeep on and off. So I had this axle, it's a torsion axle, and I had looked at the tag, it's a brand new axle. A friend of mine gave it to me, and I swear it said 3,500 pounds on it, so I kind of built the trailer all in preparation to use that axle. And I put some extra gusseting right here where it was gonna be mounted. And <laughs> then I brought the axle over because it was at my other shop and it's only a 2,400 pound axle. Well, the Jeep is 22. The trailer is going to be, you know, five to 700, probably more like 700. So uh, that axle is out. And here is the new one. <laughs> so I ended up just ordering all the components to build my own axle. Number one, because I wanted it very close to the width of the trailer. And number two, axles are getting expensive. Uh, to find something that I w liked, um, it was tough. I wanted to use the same rims as my truck so I could use my truck spare for the trailer. So I got eight lug. This will end up being, this package uh, is a 6,000 pound rating. So the springs, spindles, hubs, everything is actually, some of these components are rated for more than that, but the springs are the, the weakest point. So they're 6,000 pound springs. And then I've got just an old piece of pipe that I had, which is heavy duty steam pipe, um, nice and thick. Uh, the one thing I had to do is I took these, these spindles are really beefy. I had to take them into a machine shop and I just had them machine it down and then that will sit perfectly inside. It actually is a pretty tight fit. So I actually have to tap them in and then I'll weld them. So I'm gonna get building this axle, show you how I do it. And uh, I'll point out some stuff along the way with the kit, uh, what I'd like and what I don't like. So we'll get building. So the very first thing you wanna do is make sure you got a nice square face to slide that uh, hub into. So what I like to do is just wrap a piece of paper around, make sure the edge is perfectly aligned. And you know, usually if you do that, it's gonna be pretty close. Then just take a cutoff wheel. <laughs> slice it off. Once that is done, then I just took this uh, flapper disc, ran it inside just to kind of clean up, make sure there was nothing debris-wise that was going to stop it from sliding in. The next thing we want to do is cut a little bevel uh, just so that when we weld, we can get a good penetration and a nice full weld all the way around. So we're going to bevel it off with our grinding wheel. Okay, you might see I have a little white line on there. And if you look closely, you can see I ground just a slight little flat spot on there. That's because this pipe is seam welded. And so that's where it needs to fit. So basically, there it is. You can see it. I'm gonna have to finish tapping it in, but that's how it should fit. I did it this way so that I didn't have to worry about any kind of alignment issues. I think this is the simplest way to make a nice straight axle. So you don't want to just start pounding on this thing. I'm just going to use something that's going to go and it's not going to touch any of the where the bearings ride because you don't want to mung any of that up. Okay, so I left enough gap between my bevel and the gap. I should be able to lay a nice heavy weld into that groove. So the machined surface is five inches that slips in here. I left about a quarter inch gap right here, actually just a, a little bit shy. And so what I'm doing is drilling a little hole through the pipe into the axle. Then I'm gonna step up with the next size drill and then do uh, one bigger one to taper it. And then I'm gonna plug weld it on two sides. And in theory, that would hold this entire thing together. Now, not an axle builder, <laughs> so I'm gonna definitely weld it solid here as well. But like I say, in theory, those two plug welds, if they are good welds, would hold this all aligned. And then this is just uh, an added level of protection. So by putting this in, I kind of lock this all together where it needs to be. So I'm gonna finish drilling it out. So I'm bringing you in pretty close so you can kind of see. I drilled just a little ways into the actual hub 
and then I just used a larger bit to bevel back the edges on the pipe. So now I will just lay a good heavy weld right into that spot and then I will repeat it uh, directly across from it. Okay, I think that one's good. We'll do the other one. Okay, once the plug welds are done, I'm just gonna clean them up just so that they don't interfere with possibly where the shackle location is, or excuse me, the U-bolt location when I uh, go to finish the axle. So our next step is welding. And what we wanna do to prepare for welding is we're gonna take our torch, we're gonna warm the spindle up, and then we're gonna weld it. And when we're done welding it, we're gonna wrap it in a blanket and let it cool slowly. And that will help with our metallurgy to keep the axle as strong as possible and not create any weak spots, hardened spots, anything like that. So let's heat it up. So I'm already seeing some blue on our tubing. We wanna see some of that blue on our spindle. So you can see I'm starting to get some of that blue even down in the little gap uh, where we've got it beveled, we see some blue. So that, that's good enough. Let's fire up the welder and make this thing solid. So there it is. I think that's pretty respectable looking, especially for what we're doing here. Okay, there it is. It's all wrapped up. Let's let that sit for a little bit, we'll work on something else. So here's the completed axle. Uh, you can see right here where my plug weld was, my welds on the axle, just, you know, tube. I did mark the center because I'm gonna start laying it out to mount the brackets. And here's the other side. I need to just grind off uh, this plug weld and that plug weld. And then I got a little booger there that I, I'm just gonna knock off real quick. So there is the completed axle. So I'm gonna apologize for that right now. The wind is blowing outside. That's what you're hearing in the background of this video. So again, apologize for some of that noise. All right, I am gonna start off by saying that my wheels on this, you can see these are pretty old and rusty, but I wanted to just see how close I was on my spindles uh, to being uh, true. So this is a gauge that's in thousandths. So I got it zeroed out and let me just readjust the camera so you can see that a little bit better. First, I'm just doing the pipe and that'll tell us how much maybe these wheels are kind of out. I, like I said, I know I got a little rusty spot on one of them. Okay. So it seems like it's about 10 thousandths out of round on either the wheel or the tube. So we'll start with that. All right, so now I'm set up on, this is where the uh, inner bearing rides, the race rides. So, and I've got it zeroed again. So uh, I'm gonna say it's plus or minus about five thousandths, which I think for a trailer axle, I'm gonna say is pretty good. I'll check the other side. Okay, I'm doing the same thing on this side. First checking just the tube. Now that side is a lot better as far as the tube goes. So let's check the race. Okay, now we'll check where the bearing race uh, sits. Hit about 11 on that, but most of it's staying right in the seven or so thousandths. Now I will say one thing, some of this surface did get a little uh, dinged up in shipping. I don't know if you can see that right there. And so I did have to take a file and clean just a little bit of that off. You can see maybe a nick right there. So I don't know if that's got, it doesn't seem like I'm on that surface. I'm trying to avoid it, but uh, maybe I'm just making excuses because it's not quite as good as I'd like it to be, but I think it's pretty good. Okay, now that I'm pretty much satisfied with the axle, I'm not gonna mess around with it anymore. Now we're gonna jump to the suspension and get the leaf springs all centered up and square. Uh, I don't have the tongue on yet, but I'm gonna square it to the frame because the frame is dead on square. I checked it corner to corner. It's very good. So I'm gonna actually just mock the front two up 
I'll leave kind of everything loose until I put the tongue on. So the first thing I'm gonna do to set this is find where the center, where my center of my axle is going to be. And my center of my axle is so that I get the correct amount of tongue weight on the front of the trailer. So this is the center line that I have decided on for the axle. And then I just use my little straight edge and right there is correct. Now what I'm using is I'm just using the other front bracket to hold this up in the air so it isn't all wobbly. Uh, so, and the reason I put it up in the air is because, I'll show you, if you take it out and drop it, now look at where your center line is. So this is closer to ride height, which puts it at center. So the next thing I did is just squared up the bracket to the frame. And then I'll measure forward here to the front edge of the frame. And that bracket is 48 and a quarter. So I went ahead right in the center. I put a little tack weld in, which is holding it nice and secure. And then I will double check that my bracket is still nice and square to the frame. And then I'll also flip this leaf spring over and put a second tack in the back just so that this bracket doesn't move. Okay, now that we have our front bracket all set up, that's tacked in, it's not going anywhere. How do we set up the rear one? Well, if you take a straight edge, you find center to center, you put a square on it. If this was perfectly touching here, that would be 90 degrees to the leaf spring. But because there's zero load on the leaf spring, we don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is take a square and come off the frame. Let's see if I can get in here on it, there we go. And I'm gonna put a square there, make the shackle perfectly square with the frame. And that way, it's actually just a little bit forward of 90 degrees on the spring. So that should give me the correct spring. I don't have to worry about the spring doing the old mouse trap where the spring comes down, hits the frame, and gets stuck. That's the shortest explanation I've got. Hopefully it made sense. Tell me in the comments if I'm doing something wrong, but uh, that's, that's my understanding how to do it. And that's how I've set up other trailers and had no problem. All right, now that everything is all tacked into place, the last thing will be is to get the U-bolt kits, put them onto the axle, pull the axle up, and then make sure that the axle is square to the trailer. So let's do that next. Okay, with everything tacked up, we're gonna go ahead and just loosely hang these for now. So we put our little bracket on. Uh, so far, I would say that the plates are nice, heavy material. The U-bolts seem to be heavy duty and they came with lock nuts. So that part of the kit seems to be okay. All right, I'll get the other side and then we'll come back and make sure it's square. One quick thing you should do before you set these is tighten all this hardware up right now there is a lot of slop we want this slop here but we don't want the slop in these spots so tighten all this up then we'll make sure the axles uh, centered okay so I originally marked the center of the axle which is that black line between the two white lines and then I also put a mark right here on the outside of my axles so I would know roughly where that was supposed to hit. Putting a straight edge on the frame, it's hitting right there. So now what I'll do is I will measure from here over, double check that, measure from the frame to there, double check that on both sides and make sure that I'm nice and square on my axle or centered on my axle. All right, so everything measures out exactly the same on both sides. Take your time on this part of it. Um, get everything snug, double check, double check, double check. Um, that's my 
biggest amount of advice uh, on tightening these. You want to draw the end of the bolt in because it's got the, uh, the splines. So you want to draw it all the way into this plate, but then you don't want to pinch this down. So make sure you draw it in and then back it off a little bit. I did use at one point a screwdriver. I just kind of stuck it in there so I could draw it in tight and then backed it back off. Um, these are a jam nut, but when I back these off, they kind of lost their, their jam nut. So I'm probably gonna put some uh, thread lock on these after I get them close and then double check, make sure whatever size you get that you torque these correctly. Once those are torqued, just the final last thing will be to lay a bead of weld in on each side on those uh, the, the little pieces so that everything stays nice and centered. Uh, one other thing before I go is weld on the ends and through the plugs. I read a little bit online where you're not supposed to weld on this part of it um, because some of the, the tension that it makes. So it kind of made sense to me. And so that's what I did. Um, if that's wrong, if you're doing something else, if you got a reason, why not throw it in the comments? I appreciate you watching. Hopefully this helps your video, uh, check back in a little bit. I hope to have the trailer done here shortly and, uh, putting the Jeep on it. So hopefully it will work out as I planned.